वेलकम प्रोफेसर खन्ना नमस्कार महिपाल जी आर बी ऑल सेट यस मैम शुरू करें प्लीज गो राइट सो वेलकम एवरीबडी दिस ब्राइट मॉर्निंग but a somewhat okay. sad occasion but we are here not only to remember professor swami nathan but also to celebrate his achievements celebrate his life so welcome everybody this morning i now request professor arun grover to say a few words about this event today professor grover good morning all it's indeed my privilege to join all of you as we disseminate the information on lifetime contributions of an internationally renowned agricultural scientist professor m s swaminathan who left us a month ago on september 28 2023 he was born in 1925 we are very fortunate that another renowned agricultural scientist of our times namely professor b s dillo former vice chancellor of punjab agricultural university ludhiana who knew professor swaminathan closely as he worked with him at IC, at iari he has consented to speak us on the title legendary dr m s swaminathan an accessible intellectual giant our society spsti in association with chandigarh chapters of science academies of india and inyas has been holding memorial meetings in honor of iconic indian scientists for four years now today's event is a six such occasion in the past we recall the iconic contributions of professor s k joshi padma bhushan awardee and former dg of csir on may 15 2020 we also celebrated the innovative contributions of a well known radio astronomer from india professor govind swarup on september 7 2020 thereafter we celebrated the iconic contributions the op of optical fiber innovator Professor N S Kapani on January twenty five, twenty twenty one. Then we recalled the iconic contributions of eminent cosmologist and legendary physics teacher Professor T Padmanabhan. We recalled the contributions of Professor Rajesh Kochar, an eminent science historian, a PU alumnus, and a winner of Indira Gandhi Prize for popularization of science on March thirty, twenty twenty two. to here we are today to participate in the dissemination of legendary contributions of legendary professor m s swaminathan who among oh. other things was the first awardee of the world food prize i had an occasion to meet professor m s swaminathan personally during the birth centenary year of swami <laughs> baba in bombay in mumbai and he told me that when the homi bhava auditorium was inaugurated professor mg k menon had invited him to deliver the first public lecture in the homi bhava auditorium that was soon after the success of the green revolution in india so no behold two years down the line when i got an opportunity to serve as the vice chancellor of punjab university and we instituted the shivram kashyam memorial lectures we invited professor shivra uh, professor swaminathan to deliver the first shivram kashyap memorial lecture he was a little unwell in the first year so he came the very next year and not only delivered the shivram kashyap memorial lecture but also received the dsc uh, honoris causa from president pranam mukherjee he stayed on in chandigarh for 3 to 4 days as the guest of the punjab government he was a consultant to punjab government almost all through his life and even as even when he was in 
mid 80s or late 80s he went on to tour punjab and see for himself how punjab was doing in just about 8 or 10 years ago so i'm personally very happy that professor dillo offered to speak to us and he i wasn't aware that he himself had been he, that professor swaminathan was his teacher so it was a double delight that he that i learned this from him so to, here we are today to listen to professor dillo as we celebrate the lifetime contributions of professor swaminathan so back to you kya thank you thank you professor grover thank you for those remarks and now i request dr nishima wangu to introduce today's distinguished speaker dr nishima is from punjab university chandigarh and is a member of the inyas indian national young academy of science nishima oh, thank you ma'am um i have been given the pleasant duty of introducing professor b s dillon so professor dillon is a renowned scientist of international repute who has earlier worked with indian council of agricultural research icar as assistant director general and was also director national bureau of plant genetic research nbpgr he also served as the vice chancellor of pau punjab agriculture university for 10 years having a doctorate from indian agriculture research institute iari delhi professor dillo has made many scientific breakthroughs in maize breeding in particular and crop improvement uh, research in general he has published over 350 research publications more than that actually and authored many books in maize breeding his area of specialization professor dilla is a fellow of several coveted national uh, and international scientific bodies he has many prestigious scholarships and doctoral fellowships to his credit some of them include the dard and humboldt fellowships as well he was awarded he was also awarded with the jc bose national fellowship by dst department of science and technology india in fact the list of his national and international awards is quite long and keeping in mind the time constraint i would request professor dillon to kindly enlighten us with his knowledge and his take on legendary dr m s swaminathan an accessible intellectual giant sir please over to you nishima professor dillon we now request you to start your lecture thank you ma'am thank you uh, am i audible yes sir yes, yes. yeah thank you thank you very much thanks a lot and uh, first of all thanks to dr nishima wangu for very kind words ma'am i have been lucky to have good team and blessing of the god author is one man can't do anything nowadays in science particularly in agriculture science and uh, let me share i tried it i was successful at that time let me see again that is problem of persons like me that uh, where is this yeah 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 do your photo is coming on let, let me see what i can do yeah okay theek hai okay okay yeah is it okay yes yeah yeah better first of all thanks to sp sti and uh, its uh, president uh, shri tarunveer ji i got a phone call from him i was outside the country sir i am sorry that i was not uh, uh, because of being outside country i said oh it will take me time but then uh, dr grover sir said okay you give the lecture whenever you want as, as per your convenience so there is a delay i am sorry for that and but anyway so dr tanvir ji the president of the society uh, madam secretary professor grover saab and uh, all the uh, colleagues and particularly i came to know that professor nitya rao is also there so welcome to her also so thanks uh, to the society for this opportunity to have this player on speaking little bit about a legend about a giant and uh, ma'am said that oh, i will be speaking about the contribution lifetime contribution that is extremely difficult i was it was very difficult to summarize some of the things ultimately i have left almost sense part of it particularly green revolution part also which is uh, 
well known to most of the persons, may not to the present audience because uh, there may be not many from agriculture side, but there was no other alternative. Instead of talking about science, which is well known, I have a few anecdotes and some photographs. And uh, just now I was trying to put a family photograph also. Professor Rao, I have family photograph also in my collection, but I could not do because I am not very good in the computer now being an old man. And the more uh, serious problem is that you used to get help in computer when in job. Anyway, I will try. Let me see how much justice I can do. Not an easy job to do justice for such a, to speak about the work of such a person. In fact, the title itself, it, it uh, summarizes. Professor Grover, you helped me in arriving at this in finance. A genius, a legend, accessible, intellectual, and giant. So anyway, this is about his uh, uh, birth and then when he left us, I will not go into detail. So here is the letter from Dr. Norman E. Borlaug, 1970 Nobel laureate for peace. He said it is teamwork, but second part, however, to you, Dr. Swaminathan, a great deal of credit must go for first recognizing the potential value of the Mexican dwarfs. Had this not occurred, it is quite possible that we could not have been a green revolution Asia. I will just add one more sentence to it. Uh, maybe except for Dr. Dhuwa and some others, people may not be aware that Pakistan got, oh, I should not, I have written in my presentation, Western uh, neighbor, it will come later on. They got this seat three years before us. So it goes to credit of Dr. Swaminathan and his team that they could recognize and they could do wonders. I will come to those later on. So what you can see here. So he did B.Sc. in zoology. Then he gained for <laughs> B.Sc. agriculture. Then came to IIRE. Then went to Wageningen, Netherlands. Joined a Genesco fellow, PhD in, from Cambridge. Then went to Wisconsin Medicine. And returned to India in 1954. And here is the photograph of the gentleman with whom he did it was not called uh, MSc. It was called Associateship of IERI. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is the person. When Dr. Swaminathan got Raman, says, Raman Max essay about Dr. Dua, you can correct me. Dr. Dua and myself, we were together at, uh, for a PhD student, but Dr. Dua did MSc also from there. I was there for four years and he was there for, I think, five years. So he presented the manuscript of Dr. Swaminathan's Associateship of master degree to him in the IER auditorium. Then early life decision, just see, three decisions. Joining BSc Agriculture after MSc, uh, after BSc Geology, availing UNESCO Fellowship after clearing IPS, and returning to India, even though hey, he was offered a job on research and teaching. Punjabi mein kate na ke suna jamiya de mu tekhe aur in English morning shows the day. So you can see here three decisions which he took early in life that show that, oh, the gentleman has, has something. Then in the position he held, I will not go into detail, assistant site in 1954, had division of botany, that was botany. How from botany came to genetics? Yes. I will come to that later on. Then director, he became director, at first DG, who was also secretary to government of India. Then principal secretary of literature, and uh, then planning commission, deputy, acting deputy chairman, then international rice strategy, first Asian to be DG. And I'm not sure if any other Asian has so far become now uh, acting DG is an Indian, but uh, I don't think anybody else. Then he established the MSSRF, uh, Swaminathan Such Foundation at uh, Chennai. I had first interaction as PhD student in October 1969. When I joined PAU, uh, then IRI as PhD student, Cyto he taught two courses, cytogenetics, one period uh, for four days, and radiation genetics, two periods, that was another trimester, two periods, uh, I mean, per week, and many other symposia. 
and first thing which was amazing was his time discipline dot at 8 it is not 8 15 i just discussed with dr do uh, also it was 8 i, I read somewhere 8 15 so if, if, from a paper in current science so i i but it was 8 he will never be late by a few seconds and he was regular not that he will come today will not to come tomorrow he may have missed three four classes during whole of the two trimesters but tell us one week in advance that such and such gentleman such and such teacher will come and he, he will deal with such and such uh, chapter and that we used to always miss oh why so mm -hmm. dr swami nathan should have come and he should have read this i will not name dr Dua must be knowing the names I, I still remember the names of those who took those and we never enjoyed and immense knowledge I think only three or four times he little bit went away from the genetics and we were just, it was mind boggling. But then I will say control also. He will specifically speak on the lecture. No, yes. either, other. No, no, here and there. Amazing clarity of expression and we never heard from anybody that, oh, I didn't understand. Never. Yes. And all we looked forward with great interest and to his presentation, whether it was a lecture or some symposium or other lecture, we'll come to some lectures also. I will say he was a passionate teacher and orator par excellence. And anecdote, one day Dr. Dua, Dr. J.C. Bakshi, who was the director search at PAU and Dr. Kim Singhil, another giant in agriculture, he was head of department at the time. They had come to IERA, they were taking stroll in the evening about 6 p.m., and I came on cycle, saw them, and came down. And Dr. Bakshi, met him, I met him for the first time. And Dr. Kesgel introduced that, oh, he is Balde. At that time, I was not alone. Mm. And he took admission. He did MSc at PAU, had admission in PAU at PAU also in PAD. He left, uh, he opted for IRA. Then Dr. Bakshi started me questioning. One of the questions was, how do you compare teaching of PAU and IERA? I smiled, again smiled, again, again smiled, but ultimately pressurized. I said, sir, there is no, no comparison. Where do you have Dr. M.S. Swami Nathan there? But that night I could not sleep because I had said the same, that this sentence in the presence of director search of PAU and had department plan reading. I said, oh my God, what I have said there, but that is the fact. Then another anecdote about his uh, nature or the, the, the type of administrator he was. Dr. Dua, please correct me. What was the name of the gentleman? I think Dr. Zardar, who said in the, uh, there is a tradition in IRE at that time, I think it should be now also, that all new students, they introduce them themselves. Introduction the auditorium. day. Introduction day. Yeah, introduction day. And one of the PhD student who didn't get good grade in genetics. And his teacher was another Bakshi at IER, not JC okay. Bakshi. Mm. He was teacher for that. And he didn't get the good grade. And the uh, I think his name was Jardar. I was forgot, I forgot the name, uh, maybe some other name. He sat in the open uh, auditorium, went to the uh, dais, said, Sardar should not see papers at 12 o'clock. Mm. Then we have another student, Dr. Sandhu. Punjabi, and, BS just like Punjabi, and BS he had very heavy, heavy voice. He was Sandhu. Yeah, BS. he entomologist, entomologist, G.S. Sandhu. And he went to the desk, he said, Dr. Swami Nathan, tell him he should not repeat such things, otherwise hmm. I will kill him. And hmm. no action was taken against Dr. Rizardar or Dr. Sandhu. <laughs> that is the personality of the person. That is how he created, I will say, personal interaction. And here, I was lucky to have my PhD degree from him. 1974, 2nd of February, I got medal and PhD from his hands. 12th February, sir. 12th February. Anyway, maybe 12th. Yeah, okay. Then, initially, he was focused on uh, basic research. He joined as cytogeneticist, assistant cytogeneticist, and he ex did extensive studies on Radiation biology, chemical mutagenesis, development new varieties in cytogen to meet a very wonderful work, monosomal and so on. I will not go into detail. 
than outside India in at Cambridge and, and in the USA on species differentiation, differentiation in uh, potato. I, I, will, I will say solenum, not potato, but solenum. That helped in development of a uh, transfer of gene from wild species and varieties of Alaska process. And he worked on mitosis also. And some of the paper at that time, nature was number one. PNS, etc. All the journals, they were not known. PNS, we never knew. Nature was number one and most of the papers and many of the papers are published in nature. So that was his standing. The result was that he became a stalwart. IERE became globally known and Dr. Swaminathan recognized as stalwart. And he established Gamma Garden in those days for mm. radiation and chemical uh, uh, radiation. He established Drosophila lab and human genetics. It was division of botany. Just, just, just see the vision of the person. Just see the vision of the person. Human cytogenetics, Dr. Jaru? Yes. In, in division of botany, Drosophila professor, lab also. Professor Hujja was made there. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. and then nuclear research lab, of course, it was later on 1971 or 72. But these were when he was head of the division of botany, generated new knowledge, produced some varieties. And these are the things many people don't know. They know Dr. Swaminathan as father of Green Revolution or architect of Green Revolution, whatever term you want to use. But he got a Shansru Patna award in 1961, 35, 36 years, FNA and then these other lectures. Then he faced the question, why botany division? He said that genetics cannot be taught only from plants, because even though the genetics started with Mendel who worked on peace, but later on, many studies, many concepts came from the Drosophila yeah. or other organisms. But uh, then he changed the name of the division when he became director to division, genetics division from botany division. And uh, about uh, nature again, one of the anecdotes, Dr. Uh, Dua, you also be there. Uh, Dr. Yeah, G.W. Beetle, who has got Nobel Prize, he also worked on uh, maize uh, origin. And he came to IRA and he said that maize probably has, I'm, I'm talking 1970, maize has probably originated from teocentric through mutations. Mm -hmm. And one of the other giants, uh, I will not name him, scientist of IRA, he, after in question of uh, question answer session, he came up, came to the desk and said that, oh, if it is through mutations, why can't we have mutation now and establish having the mutations and establish that, uh, oh, maize originated from two centuries. Dr. Beadle said, no, no, it is very difficult. And Dr. Beadle was right. He said that there are so many mutants in the in nature, and nature then selects it, and it is very difficult to repeat. Then the gentleman, the another gent, he spoke in a little bit, I will say, uh, loud voice. Oh, we have here a person who could create mutation and mutation thousands every year. Apparently, it was toward Dr. Swaminathan. And whole audience, they just laughed. But Dr. Swaminathan, he just gracefully took the comment. No, no impression. No, he didn't express anything. Such a wonderful person. Mm. Now then, how? what was the general scenario at that time? Two books came in 1968. One was with two brothers, Paddock and Paddock. It was on American food use. They categorized some of the countries. And he said that, oh, India cannot be saved. If we shift that food aid to Africa, we can save Africa many countries. Another was bestseller of this year by Dr. Uh, by Mr. Paul Harlish, the population bomb. He predicted hundreds of the millions will die from the, we cannot stop. It, th that was the situation in 1968 when these books were published. And in India, Shri Nehruji, our first uh, prime minister in the background, Bengal famine, he said that el uh, everything else can wait, but not uh, agriculture. Now, in 90, I, I don't remember the year. I should have remembered. She, Subramaniam ji, he went to USA for food aid. And this is the welding. 
request more food and he was humiliated. In fact, I wanted to find out that it, it is written in many books, but I had Dr. Chadda's paper, Dr. Chadda, the economist who later on, uh, JNU vice chancellor. Dr. Grover, that is, I wanted to, uh, there are many things which are lying here in printed form, but I could not, uh, he has quoted in quote what uh, uh, Subramanian sentence, which Subramanian has to hear. Yeah. So he, 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 he was humiliated. So this is the situation. Please, if, uh, yeah, anyway. Now, you see here in uh, Tribune, November 1965, Sri Lal Bahadur Shastriji, I was a BSc student at Khalsa Kaljamar, sir that all hotels, all eating places, eatery should be closed. We let us have Shastri. It was, came to be known as Shastri or let us not have the meals on one night. And here in those who can re, uh, read Punjabi, Preet Ladi at that time was most common Punjabi magazine. It was monthly magazine. And this is advertisement from the government. Full page advertisement. Full page. February 1966. हर तीसरा फुलका जो तुसी खांदे हो विदेशी कनक दा बनता है इसलिए इस नु ना खाइए अनाज बचाओ इस तो विदेशी मुद्रा बचेगी दिस वाज द सिचुएशन प्रोबेबली दिस वाज द रीजन दैट डॉक्टर समदत सिंह गॉट अट्रैक्टेड ही शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम बेसिक रिसर्च टू अप्लाइड रिसर्च ही हैड कांटेक्टेड ही न्यू बिकॉज़ ही वाज यूएसए न्यू अबाउट डॉक्टर फोगल प्रोफेसर फोगल एट वाशिंगटन स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी who was working on Norms and Dwarfing genes from Japan, and he was working those in uh, winter weeds. Dr. Swaminathan contacted him for those weeds when he read that, oh, they are giving very high yield. Then I think that's what I have seen from the teacher, that Vogel directed uh, Dr. Swaminathan to contact Dr. Borlo. And another version is that uh, weed came 1962 to IRA. Whatever the version is, the written record is that Dr. Swaminathan requested the then director IRA to invite Dr. Borla to visit India, who came in 1963. So there are dramatic high yields, wonderful new plant type. There was clamor for seed, such a clamor, I will come to the anecdote at the bottom. Granaries were overthrown with the result in 1968. The schools were closed to store wheat. And the partnership of uh, Dr. Samnathan and Bo Dr. Borla, it led to India's green revolution. The anecdote is, in 68, when I was MSc student at PAU and adjoining our lecture room, there was room of Dr. B.S. Gill. Most of the person may not have heard him. He was number two in plant building department, number one, Dr. G.S. Atwal, who bred Hybrid Bajra one, and uh, then uh, Kalyan, Kalyan Sona. He was one of the breeders. And he was working along with Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Atwal on wheat, triple dwarf wheat. At that time, these uh, Kalyan Sona, etc., they are all double dwarf. And they were working triple dwarf. And there are a lot of uh, hue and color about triple, triple dwarf. One early morning, when we went, first period was there in 1968, we saw a good crowd assembled just outside our lecture room. The lock of Dr. B.S. Gale was broken and it came out that the seed or triple dwarf which are lying in his room, part of it that was taken by someone. I don't know what happened later on, but this is this, this, such a clamor was there that the room of Dr. There was a theft in the room of Dr. Baljeet Singh Gill in 1968. Uh, Dr. Jairu must be knowing Dr. B.S. Gill. Uh, about Dr. B.S. Yeah, uh, is my slide coming? Uh, title also there or not? There's some problem with the my presentation. Dr. Paul, sir, is slide visible? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes absolutely. Okay. okay, okay. So here, little bit timetable of green revolution. I mean, yeah, I will say wheat revolution. So 1962, some material came at IRI. Then Dr. Borlo came. There are multiplication testing. New Delhi, Lidiana, Pantanagar, Kanpur. Then they imported 250 tons of seed. Then came 18,000 tons of seeds and Kalyan Sona came, PV-18 released, then Kalyan Sona and Sona Lika, I will not go in detail. So the yield, India production increased from 12 to 17 million tons in four tons and US administrator William Gould 
coined the term Green Revolution in 1968. In 1974, India became self-sufficient in wheat as well as rice. And most important thing I will say is that the, the ray of hope that oh, India can do it. That's much more than just self food And now we are major exporter. In rice, we are number one exporter. Just see how much population has increased. And still, and all the foundation was laid by Dr. Swaminathan and his team. And this helped India to rise up in the global socio-economic hierarchy. I don't think without food self-sufficiency, what happened to the visit of Dr. Shri Subramanimji that we could have had Okran or Bangladesh, etc., etc. That's what I feel. Here is a photograph of Dr. Borlaug. You can see here the hand, uh, Dr. Borlaug, Dr. Swaminathan on his right. It's 1965 in IARA in Wheatfield. And today morning, while talking to Dr. Do I remembered an anecdote. After Dr. Borlaug got a Nobel Prize, he visited IARA in 1971. And one of the sentences he said, Indian show, uh, he gave the lecture. It was in the lecture room of the, uh, Genetics Division, Dr. Dua. Yes, he gave yes. another lecture also. India should have mutation to enable them to eat paper lying in the office of bureaucrats. So this was one sentence. So this is the situation in Punjab. You can see how, how the yield increased from 1200, uh, 12, uh, 1200 to 15, 18, 21. How the production increased at national level also. There was a big step. So there are a lot of data just I collected one. In 1960, June 1968, this postage stamp was released. This is the IRE library, the biggest library in Southeast Asia on agriculture. And we were transformed from begging board to bread basket. So then came uh, IRE. Also, I will not go into detail. This is uh, Dr. Beechel, who was there. There was, in fact, team in development of uh, IRE. It was approved by. Uh, Erie Philippine Institute 1966, but it came to India before that. India, we first tried thatching native one and introduction. It was dwarf introduction. It was very poor yielder and very bold seed. It was oh, it was horrible. I saw because I, I belong to farming family and uh, uh, I, I saw this thing and I was part of sowing and harvesting those days. Then IR8 introduced 400 acres first year. Reference Dr. G.S. Kalkar, those who know him, he was an agriculture protection commissioner. Not even a single field flowered. There was a problem in wheat also. I will not go into detail here also. But next year, there was early transplanting, etc., etc., released by PAG in 1968, and we came with rice revolution also. Many people say use of insecticide, pesticide, weed side due to green revolution. That is why you have kept here. First we decide came on which was used on large scale. That was first we decided 240. It was taught to us in BSC also. It was machete came in 1975 in case of rice, not in case of wheat. Yes. Green revolution refers to wheat and rice, and more strictly, green revolution refers to wheat. In 1968, when then nothing has happened in rice, then green revolution term was coined. So we decide use or pesticide use didn't start with green revolution technology. This is a misnomer. That is why I kept this thing. Then about rice, here is a production and yield you can see here again. And uh, this is area under high yielding varieties. You can see the jumps here, 641 to 900, then 1700 to 2000, then 2300, 2600. So this is, the, I don't know. When uh, celebrating 50 years of independence, 1997, 14, 15th August night, the president of India, he said that two most significant achievements in past 50 years, adherence to democratic system from panchayas to parliament and green revolution leading to adequate food availability from begging bowl to overflowing basket. Now, green revolution and Dr. Swaminathan, because there are all the time many things, many questions. Whatever yeah, I, I also feel that Punjab played a big role, but whatever, whatever the role may be, IER initiated the process. Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. B.P. Paul, and a wheat worker, M.B. Rao. Import of such a large quantity, it was a bold step. And Dr. Jaru, Dr. Swaminathan, once I think, uh, yeah, we were student together uh, when we were MSc student. Dr. Swaminathan said 
in the auditorium that this step is not good step, 18,000 tons import of seed. So what I mean that there are many who didn't uh, support this uh, import of seed, 18,000 tons of Mexican seed. And many states, even Gujarat and Bihar, they didn't pick up the seed which are allowed to them. Punjab picked up more. That's a separate story, need different lecture. And it was only, there is no such example. It was only Swam, Dr. Swamnathan who could convince. We needed a genius, and genius are there in the form of uh, Dr. Swaminathan to tackle the uh, regulatory and bureaucratic tangles. It is great, his ability to engage with each, I will, this sentence should. It is a throughout uh, life journey that this is uh, applicable to this, but I have put it here. His strength was ability to engage with ease with everybody from politician to bureaucrat, from junior to senior, academics, oh, student, yeah. journalist, student, common people, farmer, etc., etc. Now, it is generally thought that, oh, Dr. Swaminathan did uh, only Green Revolution, etc. Basic research is not known, and after also, whatever he did, it is not known. It is not just that. So when 1968, the stamp was being released, before that, in January 1968, there was Indian Science Congress uh, session at Varanasi. There he drew attention about uh, the use of fertilizer and, and uh, water and monocropping over one variety because all the area came under uh, Kalyan Sona and Sonalika. Sonalika came later on, one year later. So he was worried about that. And in uh, 1990, he coined the term Green Revolution to achieve. He, he said that, that it should be system, principal ecology, economics, and gender should be uh, integrated with technology to achieve enhancement of productivity in perpetuity without company ecological and uh, social harm for sustainability of development. Yeah, coming to this part now, the slides, the slides now, which are coming now. I have given the reference also because that his work is very well known. And some people say, oh, it is all Gafshap. When did he say? So I have given the references. If someone wants to see, he can see his speeches in 1968 and then what he wrote in 1999 and term was pointed. Then he said that ecological foundation of agriculture, soil health, water, bio, uh, biodiversity, energy, and social harmony, these must be taken care of. And his advocacy of sustainable agriculture made him a knowledge world leader in the field of sustainable food security. Because these things, these problems didn't come in the Western world. Encountered in India, and he was immediately, he was able to recognize. He had some sort of sense. Just in 68, when we were saying, oh, Green Revolution, Green Revolution, he, he started talking about the problems which are going to come later on. Then from food security, he shifted to nutrition security. A staunch advocate of nutrition security in 1990s, all the times he started talking about nutrition mills. Earlier, we are, these, these are called as minor measures. I am not going to trade. There are eight uh, minor measures or nutrition measures. He said, have, let us have good crop varieties, agronomic practices, and processing strategies. And defined the hunger three types calorie deficiency, uh, this uh, uh, protein. He said, okay, with uh, wheat, rice, and pulses, we can meet or meat, etc. Protein hunger. But hidden hunger, deficiency of iron, zinc, raw vitamin, etc. We need conscious effort on nutrition sense to agriculture, and we should go for family farming to meet this. Later on, he gave that term also, family farming. Of course, I couldn't include in the because of first year of space and time. Then biodiversity was, I will say, his pet subject. And Dr. H. B. Singh, with whom he did PhD, he was the first uh, head of the division of uh, mm -hmm. plant introduction, which he upgraded to be uh, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources in 1976, which you now has second largest seed gene bank in the world after USDA. In 1983, there was a International Congress of Genetics, again a very I will say prestigious event when I was in Germany. I came to know that he has really to present his case very forcefully because Germany, those, uh, Dr. Dua, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Roblin, you might have heard his name at University of Göttingen. He was another person there. So he could bring it. And there he presented uh, his uh, presidential address, ex-situ conservation cryogen using uh, liquid nitrogen and in-situ on-farm and in, in MSRF, he did a lot of work on in-situ on-farm. 
then he was the architect of the uh, protection of uh, plant varieties and farmer right in response to trips we had to have act and the act is of its own type no other country before that have this type in that it, the uh, right of farmers and uh, tribal communities as conserve and uh, agro, uh, uh, agro biodiversity is recognized later on other countries have copied us then he is again architect of uh, biodiversity act 2002 then came biodiversity authority also at chennai then uh, he was head of commonwealth team and went to central uh, guyana to uh, prepare a project for to preserve green forest in india also silent valley project he was involved and he was president of international union of conservation of nature and natural resources for six seven years and he continued this thing at msa so i will say in biodiversity conservation and use no other person has done comparable work to him, I think, other than very low a Russian scientist of the second decade of last century. Then climate change, as early as 1984, he started talking about climate change. 88, he made a presentation in Tokyo on melting of rice and rise of sea rise. I think when he came to ML, uh, this uh, MS uh, RRF, he was then focus shifted to a little more to the southern India and to the coastal region, etc. And that he became towering personality in uh, biodiversity. And he got this Global Environment Leadership Award in 1995 for his work. Then established uh, MSSRF in 1988. The focus was sustainable agriculture and rural development, particularly with a focus on small and marginal farming. He blended science and technology again, unique work. I had a lot of discussion and sometimes differed on biodiversity also and on uh, this uh, hmm. uh, sustainable agriculture or involving some persons in the conservation on farm. I, I used to give an example how long Punjab farmer can enjoy the efforts of Uttarakhand. We ask Uttarakhand farmer to just conserve the germplasm for Punjab farmer or UP farmer, etc. We used to have good lively discussion. So traditional knowledge and ecological prudence, blended with technology. And that should be pro-poor, pro-women, uh, pro-livelihood, pro-nature, etc. And then he established it known as bio-village, etc. I again could not include uh, the uh, details. And established skill empowerment centers used to see photographs. I also used it. Lit literate and literate rural women and women. And in conservation, this is again consumption and commercial. He, he tried to build up that what they call cool chain nowadays in the marshals or uh, these uh, business people. Conservation of biodiversity, cultivate that, consume that, so that we have nutrition security and commercial results for seeds. He tried that. He was successful there. I'll show you next slide. But again, I used to say, sir, it may not be practical. But he used to see the fields which are not practical to a person like me. He established four field centers in Tamil Nadu, Orissa, where he involved the communities in on-farm conservation there itself of the biodiversity, maintaining ecological integrity also. And that way he provided recognition to tribal women as conservers and improvers of biodiversity as well as associated knowledge. Knowledge is very important. And the result was that at uh, UN conference in Johannesburg in 2002, the tribal women of Koraput in Orissa who conserved land races of rice they got a Quater Initiative Award. So th that's so here is uh, his photograph outside uh, MSSRF, one of the builders of modern India. Dr. Dua, I just, uh, because Dr. Joshi, as we know, he was another giant of his time. Yeah. He, in 1995, he said he was savior of India. <laughs> so you laughed, I know. You know, I will not share anything else. Then women empowerment, that was another issue. As in planning commission, first time he introduced yeah. chapter in our planning commission, women, yes, women and development, environment I'm and development. Women, women. He was there in, in, in his six, five year plan. Yes. Then uh, he, 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 his intervention, agro biodiversity conservation, what I discussed already. When at ERI International Rice Institute, women in rice farming, he introduced it and award, he got award this uh, 
who are for serving cause of women. Then institution builder, uh, can someone guide me with time? Okay, I will. I have to be careful with time. Oh, I have little time. I have to be fast. Uh, institute be everything I will say. Whatever happened in India, particularly after he joined as a DGICR and became a uh, safety dear also in 1960s. He joined in 1972, combined these rupees in 90. Everything has its footprints. He had a vision to initiate transformation and shape the future of agriculture research and, and India. I think I have to be very, very careful. I'll just leave many things. In 1973, he established Independent Recruitment Authority, Agriculture Scientist Recruitment Board, just to go into UPSC. First KVK, which is now very become very common, established in 1974 at Pondicherry. 1970, he introduced uh, agriculture search service, just like IPS, IS, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Left very much, he was very so sensitive that things should go to the farmers, not in the lab. He introduced uh, lab to land program, then this Congress, which I heard already. Then he established National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. He was the founder president, and the statement is it owes its origin to the vision of Dr. D. Peter Paul, who was expired in 1989. It was vision of Dr. Swaminathan, as I see it. But this is what is written in the documents. Now it was it was written. Then a sifat. When we were student, Dr. Uh, you may be remembering. In all his lectures, he showed that CFTRI should be with ICR. Yes. And I did not understand that at that time. Because processing was separate from ICR. He all the time said that oh, it should be there. He could not do it, but ICR did that in 1989. That is why there was divergence in processing and then uh, processing. Yes. Then institution builder, he was helpful in ICRISAT. This is a International Crop Research Institute for Samuel Travics at Hyderabad. Bio uh, International Board of Plant Genetic Resources. Now it is Biodiversity International. International Council for Research in Agroforest in Nairobi. The ICGB in Delhi. As DG Iri, he has influence and leadership across India. He helped China to... In we had a rice research institute very much earlier than ICR at Katak. Okay. He helped, it, it was not there in China, helped in Philippines, then rice research station in large number of uh, these countries. Then books he art, uh, authored started from food security, rural security, Afghan revolution, he has uh, th th 13. Then you see how he has moved to then bio happiness, remember <laughs> your humanity. So slowly and slowly he went to humanity. He became, he was human being more than yeah uh, anything else. He yeah. books he eat, eat it, uh, edited. First was on cytogenetics, his field. Then society, public policy, etc. Then you see biosecurity. And these are the proceeding, biotechnology. How, how he, he moved away from his subject, went to wider field. And he had environmental uh, agriculture. There, I also contributed uh, one uh, yep. uh, chapter in that. Awards and honors, oh, wonder, that was very difficult to, what, what should I say? So I said major ones. Shanti Srupanakar Award is, I will say, most prestigious Indian award. Raymond Award, 1971, Albert Einstein. First food prize, Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace, UNAP Award. Then Time Magazine. Identified one of the three Indian guns along with Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Tagore Sahib for being other among 20th century most influential Indian people of 20th century 1999. Then UNESCO award and about 1971 award. For this award, he gave lecture at IR in one lecture, public lecture outside IR. It is an auditorium just opposite Krishi Bhavan. And I still remember in that he presented a photograph of a toilet with uh, this. Uh, uh, this toilet uh, uh, water tank, Systems. and he said that all the, whenever we go to toilet, we waste seven eight liters of water. That I never forgot, and I still follow that. He, he said, "Please save as much water as possible." See, things he said in 1971. Then major award uh, afterwards, UN UN. I will just show you here. Then Pagwash, he was first biologist. Before the Pagwash was about atomic energy, etc., damage due to atomic power. He was first biologist to be president of that. Earlier, there are all physicists. Then, of course, Chairman of the National Commission on Farmers will come to that later on. World Food Price Selection Committee, World Committee on Food Security, UNDP World. UNDP called him father of economics. I could not find here the year of reference. 
So I left it at the end. Then his photograph at FU in Rome. Then some selected awards. I'll just uh, tell you name of the country. Inter Czechoslovakia, UK, USA, USA. This was first one. Then uh, Philippines, Netherlands, USA. This is Asian. Then this is World Academy, USA, China, USA, USA, International Economic Times. And then this scientific American again included on 50 world leaders in Cambodia, Chile, USA, Spain. And this is not the whole list. This is selected list, please. Then some Indian, Iska, Patnagarwar, then Silver Jubilee, etc. Then Indian Science Congress, then these words. Then these, I think, is uh, are more important. These are also important, but last word, Indira Gandhi. Lal Badr Shastri, Indira Gandhi. So, some selected national award. There are other. Then, fellowships and honorary doctorate. These are our main fellowships, I mean, uh, academies. Then, he was final fellow of th uh, Third World Academy of Sciences. Honorary doctorate, PAU, IARE, Punjab University, Andhra Pradesh. More than 80. Latest figure I could find was 84, but I am not sure. It must be more than 84. So, I, I want to stick to more than 40. Then the chairman of National Commission. Uh, sir, may I take a little bit more time, Dr. Paul, or uh, uh, me, uh, Madam Secretary? Yes, please. Uh, please go ahead. Okay. We are enjoying. Please. Yeah, okay. okay. I, 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 I'm quite fast, but uh, still I will not. I think I will be able to finish in the next 10 minutes. I will not be. I will take 10 no minutes. No hurry. Yeah. He submitted uh, six reports and there are recommendations on all aspects. I will not go into detail, but most important is that MSP be at least 50% higher than weighted average cost of production, popularly known as this is the formula. So this is most well known. And you know all this uh, agriculture, uh, the, the farmer protest, etc., etc. And here again, I hear a little bit. Uh, in fact, I attended two courses. He was director at that time. And then I came in, in his contact in 2000, 2000, 2005, when he was heading MSSRRF, and I joined as director of NBPG, and National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources. And he was working, I will say, next to NBPG in conservation, biodiversity conservation. And in fact, on farm conservation, he was doing much more work than combined, all other, including NBPG, we were not working much on, on farm conservation. So those five years I interacted with uh, him very closely. I went to Chennai many times. And when I revisited Delhi, he used to come to NBP here maybe for five minutes or 10 minutes, maybe a little bit of time. So I asked him, sir, 50 percent, isn't it a bit higher? Are not we putting government in a bit of difficulty? He, he very he smiled and very light tone, he said. Dr. Long, do you know how much, what is the profit margin of industry and corporate sectors? So this are the basis. And I will say he he's agri scientist, most respected by farming community. There is Bogan Amantamar Das in Punjab, Gurdwara. And he's known as, and here another certificate, a farmer Manji Singhil, he has his statue. He is a farmer come. It is village Gahal. Moga and sources from the other time. It's published in Indian Express if someone wants to see that. This is a living certificate of his, uh, you can say, the respect which he commands among the farming community in North India, particularly. And this is what he said in 1969 about Punjabi farmers. Punjab farmers have been backbone of revolution. Revolution are usually associated with the young. But in this revolution, age has been no obstacle. Farmers, young and old, educated and uneducated, have easily taken to new agronomy, etc., etc. Biographies, seven biographies on him. One, a gentleman in Czechoslovakia, he is written. And another one, Mr. Dill, he is a thorough gentleman. I have met him. He is a Punjab, a Pakistani Punjabi. He has written. Others are written by Indians, uh, five others. He got... Uh, he uh, nominated Rajya Shabha, then Padma Shiri, 67, 72, Padma Pushan, and uh, Partharatna. Now, 
there are almost everybody who has written his obituary say that he deserves to be part ratna and i think uh, i i hope that he will be honored and it was last year who is request sent a request to honorable prime minister by padmawardi it is dated uh, 16th of december dr rs froda another director general icr dr rv singh dr kl chadda dr kl chadda is again from punjab a great artist vp singh who worked on basmati and myself who sent a request it was not uh, it didn't bear the fruit last year maybe now then this, this is one thing he, he never bothered as i told you about the comment uh, in in the in the lecture he became more involved if there are green revolution he thought of ever green revolution if we are having monocropping he thought of uh, biodiversity conservation if there are gender issue he thought uh, now we should empower the i i just uh, not guru that is why it took time i just wanted to put together all the objectives which have been used to describe him and i could not uh, put in one slide so i said okay one sl slide is these are the objectives which have been used or without uh, with or without great good par excellence great leader or good leader etc or some other outstanding and i will feel that all words are inadequate as a researcher and as a uh, teacher he mentored a large number of students leading to emergence of swaminathan school some of his students more than one i know at least they became secretary government of india in different departments or occupied high position outside india and i was privileged to have him as my teacher and later on as an as a mentor and opportunity to have interaction conversation and enjoy this agreement and i never felt that i am talking to a giant i am talking to at least we think that our teachers we, we treat our teachers as father figure you are much more than father figure but never i never felt oh, i mean significant and he had great memory after 1974 in 1970 uh, not 74 in 71 yeah 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 74 convocation i met him in 2000 when he came to nbpg yeah in between he used to come to icr but i was assistant director he came to pg also so i was uh, not a significant person who will so face to face we met after 26 years in 2000 and he said hello dr tillo it was not in nbvg sorry it was in icr he said hello dr tillo how are you it that left in label mark on me such mm. a great person such a great memory and such a humble man i see him as a great teacher mentor and writer visionary scientist and leader dynamic leader and above all a human being very humble you but you can put all the objectives this thing this is the my last meeting i met him this is not photograph of last meeting but i met him probably it was uh, uh, january or february 2019 uh, uh, this uh, jetli sir was finance minister he called uh, dr samnathan some other agriculture scientists including me to discuss budget at the time he came on chair and after the meeting was over and because minister was there minister of state was also there the lady uh, who is now minister of finance she was minister of state at that time so people just ran after them and uh, because they were sitting on chair i had the opportunity and privilege and good fortune to handle the chair for 2 3 minutes or 4 minutes then just within no time some people came from ministry of finance and they handled the chair of course i did not have my photograph of that time it was not possible but i saw this photograph this dr rt patel from cefa who had this photograph handling or helping him in chair so this is my last meeting also i had the meeting together had discussion etc but then had the opportunity and privilege to handle his chair for 3 minutes 4 minutes or 5 minutes in his uh, <clears throat> accomplishment of scholarship didn't change down ah yeah this is very important such an accomplishment and didn't have any change what i saw him at uh iri dr dua i i don't know it i don't know name of the person but i heard at iri that one of the my uh, senior 
sent uh, student. He didn't get job for six months. He went to Dr. Swaminathan. You may be remembering the name because you were there. He said, sir, I did my PhD. And response, yes, I know, very good. Sir, I had good marks. Yes, I know, very good. Sir, I got PhD. I work on this, etc. Good for that. Sir, I have, I didn't get, uh, I I'm, uh, didn't get any job for six months. Yes, I know, very good. Sir, I'm going to commit suicide. Yes, I know, very good. Oh, what did you say? This was his nature. Such a person. Always positive. Then that is from where he started working for police officers. So that person, when he got everything, he was on the committee on Nobel Prize, also stuck Nobel Prize, on nominees, etc. He was down to earth. He was soft spoken, who treated everyone, junior, senior, at the global level, yes, to the yes, community. Yes, yes. And his legacy, what I could summarize, I don't know. I know no many, no no person in comparison to him. Science is be respected, adequate resources be allocated to such institution. Scientists dream and pursue. That is what I feel that we Indian scientists, we are very good workers, very good repeaters, but not dreamers. They should dream, pursue the dreams with total commitment. Then institute focus on development of application new technology and this yellow highlighted part is definition of evergreen revolution. Enhance productivity and perpetuity without accompanying ecological and social harm for sustainable development. There are so many person have talked about him. I have selected only three. One is a leather work. He was Nobel Prize winner. He says no one who has combined the insight of cutting edges of biological senses with attention to most urgent needs with competence, devotion, and energy. Second one is from Secretary General UN, living legend. He will go into ends of history as world scientist of rare distinction. And third one is from our former uh, president, Shri Venkatramanji. I will say one of the best one I could see. Pleasant, soft-spoken, dignified, but unassuming. Dr. Swaminathan has a dreamer, a uh, demeanor, which conceals his brilliant intellect, unparalleled achievements in science and research, and countless awards, etc., etc., etc. Acknowledgement. Uh, many things I've taken from Dr. K. Swan and Dr. Nair paper in current science, and um, there are many other sources, but they were not uh, that significant sources. And if you are interested, please enjoy, I will request you, enjoy his oratory for just one moment. Abbas, sound. Sound, bada dijiye. Oh, okay, I, but how to do it? <laughs> I will try. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here. Super, super. My ideas. He had new words, some new idea in every presentation. Here, green and gun, he's talking. And what is smooth, what pleasant oration. Right. Simply right. wonderful. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I never saw him. I saw only photo. I never saw him in this uh, post. So just okay. enjoying. Yeah. So thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Oh, I could finish in time. Oh, wonderful. But I was too fast. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much for patience. And I, I'm not sure I could done just. It, it is difficult to do justice. Thank you very much. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you all. Brilliant talk, sir. And thank you very much. And thanks to Dharamveer for prompting me that I should reach you to give this talk. Thank you, sir. Now I can see why one hour is too little for this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, madam. And I will be very happy to ask question, uh, answer the questions, because there is so much about him. Maybe I know something. Maybe I don't know something. And maybe Dr. Dua can help me somewhere, or Dr. Yaru can help. Yeah, me can somewhere. I? Yeah, please ask Ditya Rauji to say something. Can I ask some question? Yes, please. Yeah. No, I am not. Uh... I am a layman in the field, but uh, I must uh, appreciate from core of my yard, 
that he is the one of the greatest man we have in our we had in our country he has worked all along in various field of agriculture and uh, helped uh, agriculture production and uh, uh, various other aspects of it uh, tremendously and saved the country from food crisis uh, but uh, i have some question uh, uh, that uh, during those days in 60 when there was food crisis and that all those days india was suffering from in the agricultural instruments they were very poor quality because irrigation irrigation was not there and mm -hmm. uh, implements were not there for digging the earth and the small oxes were there to plow the fields and these were various uh, reasons although there were agriculture manure they are produced in the villages so all those things were helping but i think seed was also a problem but the quality of seeds uh, uh, were not good at that time so the production uh, was not sufficient to feed the population but uh, uh, this kind of situation was not there before uh, in the early part of the uh, country or uh, 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 in the country then um, i think uh, uh, this uh, uh, swaminathan and paul professor paul and all these made uh, significant contribution but my question is specifically suppose burlag has not come to india could india would have done it alone that's my basic question okay that's a first of all thank you very much for uh, uh, being online but it has very many to, many parts very, very very happy to see you uh, indeed start what that sir thank you very much yeah a wonderful question yes i think we have, we would yes. have done without borlog also the reason is at that time before wto came the exchange of germplasm was so easy so easy whenever i went to usa i i i miss breeder i was miss breeder whatever i asked i got it and if you have seen my presentation the material came to uh, uh, to ir in 1962 itself rockefeller foundation had used two institutions iri established in 1960 it was supported by ford foundation and rockefeller foundation supported the cement institute of wheat so the germplasm had come had that not come even that also that let us say that borla was not there then rockefeller foundation or not once somebody would have read about wheat once someone went to mexico it was so easy to get germplasm there was no hitch where i went whatever i asked from mesbrid in usa they gave me there was absolutely no hitch before wt and again anecdote it will be interesting for dr duga or who was subject to agriculture dr duga when i appeared for a position of a Uh, director N B P G R, I have asked a question. What do you think about uh, I P R at select? I don't believe in it. He said, "Why?" I said, "Because we could have green revolution without I P R at etc. The germplasm was available." He said, "Oh, you were talking something about the government against the government. We are for I P R. He was from the government." I he, I said that you are interviewing B S T law. Once I am director N B P G R, then I will follow you. But now I am independent person. So, sir, it was so easy to get germplasm. It might have been delayed. Yeah. IR IR eight came without warlock. It came later. Yes, please. But that does not minimize the importance of Dr. M. S. Swami Dasan. <laughs> he 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 could have gone and collected, or someone else he may have but, sent someone. Else. But I think this was the greatest opportunity for India to prove its ability. Yeah. Of and uh, getting the this field. Uh, 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 credit for the entire uh, wonderful work which Swaminathan has done. So Sir, I don't know what is the uh, wisdom of calling Borlaug. Uh, he should have taken initiative. Things were bad. Maybe it goes more bad, but ultimately there was to be there was to be improved. This is vision. Let, 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 let me. But I don't know what was necessity 
to call Borlag. Uh, okay, okay, that's another oh, good question. Uh, but I will come first uh, that uh, uh, India could do it. Why India? Probably our, our government yeah. did not believe our Indian scientists. No, 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 no. no. I, 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 I'll, I'll come. You see, that's the first variety, Kalyan Sona. Kalyan. It was released in 87 names, starting from Turkey to Vietnam. And in those days, I think uh, Vietnam, etc., I mean, 1960s, not in good shape. It was Pakistan. And Pakistan got this seed three years ahead of us. Belkut. That is where India showed that we have persons. We have the system. One thing which helped uh, that in 1957, India started All India Coordinate Search Project. It started in Mears. Other projects came later on. We also had All India Coordinate Project in, in 1963, uh, two and three, the project was, it came in 1966. But there was some sort of interaction already. If you have seen that slide, the material was obtained by IERA, but it was evaluated at Ludhiana, it was evaluated at uh, Kanpur Comit Comit and, and Pantanagar. So that was there. Why is that uh, uh, this uh, Don't lie. Don't Hello? Hello? He visited, Diana, he visited Kantanagar. Yeah. He visited other places also. So that way he could convince more persons about the performance. And you may not be knowing even what they call this uh, uh, explanation. Excel Borlaug was, he has to give explanation when he sent the seed 1965 war was going on. So the ship got stranded in the Arabian Sea. Germination mm -hmm. went down and <laughs> Rockefeller Foundation called his explanation. So these things, these things happen sometimes. So uh, not that uh, Dr. Swaminathan could not have gone outside. He was uh, he worked there in USA, he worked in UK for a long time. Yeah. And I think whosoever talked with him for five minutes, he got convinced about him, about his capability, about his uh, knowledge. No, no doubt about that. He could have won, but uh, I think they, that may be the reason they yes. called uh, Dr. Borlaug. I will add to that one a little later. Yeah, should we ask Nitya? Yeah, Nitya? we should. Yeah, Ma, Dr. Nitya Rao, we are waiting to hear something from you. No, thank you so much. Actually, it's been really nice listening to you, uh, Dr. Dhillon, rec recounting your memories of uh, IARI. I think we were all young children at that time in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And I know that we used to, you know, really enjoy also interacting with many of the students uh, in the lab. We would sometimes go there. I think our uh, also weekends and so on were mostly spent. Our entertainment was to go to the fields, uh, either in uh, IARI or to the Delhi villages uh, to see what was going on in the 60s. So I think it was really nice for me to listen to your recollections and the, you know, your anecdotes and the points uh, that you have picked out. I really uh, appreciate that very much. And I think some of the things uh, you have said, you know, as a student or as others and the, you know, his kind of uh, treatment of everybody the same. I think this is something we felt in the home also. Yeah. That it, they didn't matter who it was or from which part of the country or, you know, uh, whether a student, I mean, students were, of course, very, very welcome uh, in our house. And I think all festivals we would celebrate with whatever, you know, students, whether it was Christmas, whether it was uh, Holi, whether it was Eid. So I think students were very much uh, part of our, uh, our growing up. And I think we learned very early on that like everybody is the same. I think you mentioned about humanity. And I think uh, that's very much true. Like, we never knew that, you know, there's difference between people. Like, aajkal to bohat sunne ko milta ki yahan se, wahan se, you know. But at that time, we just thought that everybody um, is equal and there is no difference uh, between anybody. So I think that uh, it's uh, nice that you also experienced that and you were able to point that out. Awesome. Uh, uh, that it was a it was a good thing, and you know we of course never knew as children about the green revolution and all this kind of thing. And people would ask us, 
ki name you know tease us actually in school when we were little ki he is not your father he's father of green revolution <laughs> so is <laughs> green revolution <laughs> your uh, you know uh, related to you so i think uh, there was but uh, i think that this you know this sense but we never felt that he was neglecting or anything he was equally loving and kind and you know in the family very fond and attached to all of us but i think that balance also between his work was his Pani whole pilai do ke gilas pani to piya hai abo thai bas 5 minute and like you said he included us in that work so all our picnics or entertainment and so on those days tv and all was not there we would go to the fields or we would go to the farms you know we would have a nice lunch uh with the punjab farmers i think delhi but also punjab farmers he was really uh, very much appreciative of and always talked about you know that the initiative of punjab farmers is uh, was something he always appreciated and you had that quote also but i think even recently when the pa- farmers protest and so on uh, was going on he felt very bad he was not so well but i think he really felt very bad that this is not the way to you know that punjab farmers have so much of initiative that the way to deal with them is not to uh, try to put them down or to show that uh, you know they are not doing their best for the country so i think that was something he really uh, uh, was very much uh, always believed in i think punjab was one of his favorite states as you had mentioned that he always liked to go there and spend time uh, wherever possible even though he has been working more in southern india after setting up mssrf but i think his attachment to punjab did not uh, the spirit of the farmer i think and the initiative of the uh, punjab farmer i think it never went down so thank you so much i don't want to speak a lot it was very nice for me to listen uh, to your reflections and memories in fact after he passed away we had an event in chennai and uh, dr vp singh whom you mentioned had come and yeah. he was also narrating some stories from the iri days and dr keshavan who was there also after 1965 for his masters i think he was also narrating some stories so i think for us that was a time of our childhood so it was really nice to listen to some of those early memories of iri uh, as well and i think whatever he did iri remained for him uh, i think the most important institution yes uh, in his uh, in his life and his attachment yes. to iri and to supporting iri till the very end yes. so thank you so much i won't say much more thank you again yeah, yeah. thank you thank ma'am you your time, your, your very nice listening to you yeah just a, one thank moment you. ma'am i have your family photo also i tried to include it but the time was not permitting and i saw or i will say we the students saw i i don't know one, one, all three sister together i don't remember that but that never experimental center in the playground yeah. your mother used to come along with the, you absolutely and then ma'am again one anecdote which i i forgot to tell uh, i i heard from a very senior colleague and very reliable colleague that whenever there was a symposium or something like that meeting or something that dr swaminathan used to write the concluding part before the proceeding started he was able to convince he was sure that this is going to be dr r p sharma let me name the person <laughs> who is now chairman of the trust which dr swaminathan established that congress trust and i, I dr sharma also wrote out me in fact uh, it was a player to be at uh, iri so stars so many star wars not so i think uh, and uh, one thing maybe that you forgot i think he was most happy and i was there with him maybe it was 2013 when iri named the library actually mm. after him uh, and he felt that, that was the biggest honor that uh, he received because the, the library as you had shown in the stamp yeah. as well he said that that is where the uh, knowledge actually is uh, located and all of the scientists work and that to have that library uh, named after him he felt was a real you know one of the happiest moments uh, yes uh, but then again it reminds me of something i had never i never saw him in library but in the next morning lecture he was all the time update then we inquired we came to know that the general used to go to his home every evening mm-hmm. whatever is important he will uh, read uh, uh, at home update in his knowledge 
update. Yes. And that was I in the every. Exactly. Anyway, great. And you had that. also mentioned the Nature magazine. And I think mm -hmm. Nature magazine was something he subscribed to through his life. So till the very mm -hmm. end, he yes. was re reading uh, the, the Nature and Science, these two international uh, yeah, maybe that is the reason. magazines. Yeah. Yeah, golden times, nature and science. Yes, science is also number two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Nitya. Thank you, you, Professor Dillo. Uh, welcome, Dr. Rajinder Singh. Uh, and sorry for that delay. <laughs> Maipal ji, <laughs> Facebook pe or kuch hai kya? Koi question? Maipal? Uh, ji, ma'am. Uh, Facebook pe nahi hai, ma'am. Koi question nahi hai. So, everybody present on Zoom platform. Any more remarks are welcome. Otherwise, we go over to Professor hmm. I.S. Dua. To Madam, formally... can I make one? Ma'am, can I make please. one question? Haan, Desh Deepak Ji, please. Please, please. please uh, Professor Dillo, I want to know uh, what were the views of uh, Professor Swaminathan on transgenders? Because you worked very closely with him, so I think you would be doing the best. What, how did he view the transgenics? And whether they should yeah. be introduced in India or not? This is a very, I will say, hot question when we talk about or discuss about Dr. Swaminathan. Uh, you see, he was in favor of transgenics. And uh, the certificate for that, if it is required, then Dr. Ajay Prita at MSSRF, he was working on rice transgene for salinity tolerance. And he also became, I think, FN. He's head of National Academy of Sciences. But at the same time, he was very much concerned, very sensed about biosecurity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that we we must know that it's, it it should be evaluated. At the same time, he was very much sensed to, to what I said earlier also to small margin and small farmers. Eighty-seven percent of the farmers in India. They have less than five acres of that. Once he shifted to MSRF and started working in tribal community, then he, sh he shifted more to that. First time, when I read, and I also had discussion on this topic with him, not once, many times. Because being from Punjab, I, I, am, I, I am more pro transgenic uh, compared to him a later part. So first time in the report, he was chairman and he said that uh, there shouldn't be no transgenics for herbicide tolerance. Whereas we need herbicide tolerance. Had maturity not come, it is very difficult to do growing, uh, I mean, growing, etc. Then uh, rice would not have succeeded in Punjab and Haryana at least for the revolution part. So in that he, he has written that for herbicide tolerance because the landless labor depend upon the weeds which they collect. Those of my age, they must be knowing that in olden time, the landless labor from the villages go to just feed and cut the grass. Then later on when, uh, in fact, I will say that Dr. Kaysen, whom uh, Dr. Rao also mentioned, he was his first student and he was working at uh, uh, MSRF also. He was a little bit uh, uh, more away from transgenics. And he, all the time, uh, Rao, maybe knowing more. That's what I felt. And I, I said to Dr. Rao and Dr. Arnachalam, both of them, that these are more views of Kaysun, to, uh, to Kaysun as, as uh, <laughs> and, and when I discuss it, VP Singh also, I say that, oh, Dr. Kaysun is influencing too much. He is with him. VP Singh, you go, because VP Singh worked with him. So then later on, the Supreme Court also, Kaysun, it was Kaysun, not Dr. Swamilath. Then there was paper in current science. Let us come to the point, which have been in most discussion. He dissociated himself. He said, no, no, no. I was just a co-author. You see, many times uh, we just add name of senior persons out of respect or out of chimchagri. I don't know how to use the word in English translation. Without telling, without knowing. I had to issue a written circular in NBVR. Please don't add my name without my written consent, because somebody added my name somewhere. So he dissociated himself. He was progressive, let me say that. Hey. He was progressive. He was pro-transgenic. 
that is why Dr. Ajay Parita has been working on salinity intolerance in case of rice and uh, uh, these grooves also. But uh, he, he was at the time also sensitive to the needs of sustainability and, uh, and this uh, land is farmers. So that, that's my answer. I will say a balanced approach very much because transgenic is not answer to everything. But in certain cases, my feeling, this is my comment, transgenic are required when the gene is no, not available in the gene pool. Then we need to bring something from somewhere. And all transgenics will not have transgene from animal. I always give example. Pro-vitamin A, genes are available in maize. Maybe after 10 years, we are able to, if you can bring the genes from daffodil in golden rice. Why not from maize? Maybe after 10 years, maybe after 5 years, the way we are progressing. So, transgene, maybe uh, uh, no. see, um, President Sir, I am writing on transgene. Once I am ready with that, maybe I will give a uh, presentation if you agree. Yeah, please. No, the daffodil, daffodil gene does not have a repressor. I'll talk to you later. It does not have a repressor, whereas in the it, it doesn't have. I don't know. It's it's written written in the, I, I discussed with Potri, Potri also from yeah. uh, Switzerland, yeah. since you, yeah. Europe. Anyway, okay. this is what in the literature and what this is what Potri also said. Good. Good. Okay, Prasad, do I now? It's your turn. Yes, sir. Oh. Good afternoon, everyone. My teacher, friends, reverend mm -hmm. teachers, Professor Patak also. As I got up in the morning, I immediately said that my friend, my colleague, my class fellow, Baldev is talk, going to talk on Dr. Swaminathan. I immediately put the green turban in order to honor the green revolution. And my mind took me to 1967. Mm -hmm. 67. 67, when I joined the IRI. Professor Swaminathan was in the plant introduction department at that time, under Dr. Harbhajan Singh. And he started talking, teaching the class on plant introduction under evolutionary biology. I tell you the impression which the fundamental concept is two years before Professor Baldev joined the IRI are so ingrained in our minds. In our minds means five or six of us who meet on evolutionary biologists, even in Cambridge University, talk about those things which he used to talk. He, the first thing he used to say after weekly that Inderji, that's my first name, or whatever it is, to other Suresh, to Dr. Mahati, that in case you want to study biology, please master the Latin language. The Latin language he was so much found out that he told us that he did his work on solanum. Solanum, that means reverse of, reverse of sun. And solanum tuberosum means something which is free from medicinal value but full of stars. Look at official alias word that means medicinal. And if you look at Amla, at that time he started talking it in Amla, it is umbilica officialis, means the medicinal value contained in the uh, coming to the child through the umbilical cord of his or her mother. The properties of that are transmitted to your body through this particular food. We were very much excited that how much Latin is to be studied when Latin is almost a compulsory language in Cambridge University from where he had come. All those things really, you see capsicum, I remember the word capsicum which he used in sexier, the one which can shake, shake by hotness. Capsicum anum means mirage. So, Every day, five, six, seven words coming from Latin, introducing into the biological world in the plant introduction department at that time. With the, uh, he as a you know, holding that course, are uh, really ingrained in our mind. Later on, going to the genetics department, and we took his course in 
nine when Prasambal Dev also joined, but 68, I took the course as told by Prasambal. All the adjectives which Prasambal Dillo has used, they are tailor cut for me. I, I am going to request Prasambal Dev later on to send me the slides of all adjectives which I can use for somebody else, but I don't find anyone who can be who is fit for that particular program. Excellent. Everywhere, every word was, every word, and hats off to, no, I should not say hats off, turban off to Madam Meena Swaminathan also, who used to drop him at five minutes to eight in front of the genetics department, just for him to go to the class. And on the way, he used to say, blah, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone. Yes, very good, very good, very good. As Prasambal Dev said that somebody said that I'm going to commit suicide. And he said, okay. He could not find, he could not comprehend what she's saying because his first reflex action used to be, to be, you know, to please the others. In fact, so many sensitive, he, he could understand the, uh, you know, the blood of the person at the time, what is needed at that time. Unfortunate incident happened in IRI that somebody by the name of Shah, Dr. Shah, came from Australia, joined the Department of Agronomy, committed suicide because he was not getting the job. And within two years, he planned for the introduction of agriculture research services and made Nit Shah as one of the as one of the director Shashadri as one of the direct, one of the director general of ARS, keeping that so many things in mind of agronomy and all that. He could understand that things are not going in the way in which he, it is to be designed. There was a strike of the student. I as a secretary went there as secretary of postgraduate student union. And only, only thing was that the deputy director, deputy registrar, Mr. B. M. Paul must be removed from the services because he has slapped one of the scientists during the visit of one of the one of the prime ministers of a different country. And it is very nice to know that even the students coming from all the 19 states at that time, they 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 raise slogans in English. And our slogan used to see, see, always say, bombard, bombard, BM Paul. Bombard, bombard, not BP, but BM Paul, who was a deputy registrar. And he immediately removed him, not removed him from service, but shifted him. And he could understand the tune and tenure of the student. He could understand that at this time, this is required. That I remember, and Professor Dillo also remember that when Dr. Borlaug visited IRI after getting the Nobel Prize. We had a wonderful, great meeting in the auditorium of IRI. Uh, very nicely, Professor Borlaug said that in every Nobel Prize function, there is a citation, the briefest citation. And the citation in Professor Borlaug's name was, uh, because he got the Nobel Prize in peace, and he got in Oslo, not in Copenhagen. He said the citation was that uh, there will not be peace if the bellies are empty. This is what uh, this uh, Dr. Borlaug remarked in IRA auditorium. He says, had I the power of corrections of the citation, I would, would have said there cannot, uh, there cannot be peace had in India they are, men, they are not people like Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. Rao also he mentioned, Dr. Rao also he mentioned, who was the wheat breeder, and two or three more names he mentioned. One of them was, of course, uh, Rao, I remember very clearly, and Dr. Ramanujam as a statistician, and Harbakshan. He says, if there can be any Nobel laureate who, who can be in the agriculture, then it should have gone to Dr. Swaminathan also, plus otherwise also to Professor Jugindar Singh, who happened to be the teacher of uh, Professor Bhaji, Dr. Bhaji. So these memories make your life. 
and what is what is more important at the uh, Professor Patak, I have always listened to you. I have followed you in every way, in letter and spirit. But when you talk about Borlaug, Borlaug not coming to India and bringing the Nobel Prize, science is a part of globalization. When Dr. Borlaug was there, at that time, even I could take so many seeds from Japan and the Rockefeller Foundation. I think Professor Baldev was also a Rockefeller Foundation fellow and so was I. We could take the seeds at any time to any place, any place. Many, many times we were taking the seeds even to this place too. But it was only one of the uh, uh, docs, uh, this uh, Rockefeller Foundation scientist who was caught at Indian border at Pakistan taking all oil seed joint genomes to Pakistan and then the red alert was sounded. After that, it got stopped. After that, that the rule, the law was made. But Borlaug, if I take one minute, madam, let us resolve the three attributes which govern the yielding capacity of wheat plant, which is the main work of Taksami Nathans popularization of wheat varieties. Number one is the number of grains per, per meter sphere. Second is the number of the grains, number of the grains per year. Year means fruit, inflorescence. Year, E-A-R. And the third is the weight of a single grain. Borlaug could find out that the number of the grains in Mexican varieties is around 35% more than that of the Indian grains like uh, NP varieties, Usa Lerma, Usa Lerma or other varieties. As a result, there is a lodging. The lodging takes maximum detrimental effect to the yield of the crop. He introduced dwarfing gene 1, dwarfing gene 2, Gleansona, and dwarfing gene 3 by triple dwarf popularized under the name of HD, that is hybrid daily. And as a result, the fertile, the crop became very dwarf, became responsive to fertilizer, and there was, in 60s, there was a revolution. I am 100% sure that Professor Swaminathan's photograph on the stamp released by, at that time, uh, Minister of State, Mr. Shinde, earlier had the picture of three scientists on that picture, but he got it. He said, no, there should be histogram, histogram showing the wheat, uh, wheat yield increase rather than the picture of the mortals like me or like this and like this. In 70s, when nuclear research laboratory was, was commissioned under the directorship of Dr. Datta, he, you know, he brought a revolution, Professor Swaminathan, by presenting a bouquet of wheat rather than that of roses to Madam Indira Gandhi, telling that the revolution, the revolution is always brought by agriculture and not by floriculture. I, I recall vividly at that time, little later, 10 years later, in one of the biographies, when he came to Chandigarh also, he preferred to stay in G18 in our house when myself and Tarmiji went to Hotel Mount View to, to meet him again. At night he spent with us telling that his students, I said, okay, this is a government house. It is not in very, very good shape. I requested Professor Patak a little bit that time also during the guest house, it was available. But then Gopinjab government put him into Hotel Mount View he said it's better to spend the nostalgic period with the old students rather than with the with in the hotel in the company of unknown to uh, pe to people who are just moving in front of me. I'm just one of the old men here on the wheelchair. He was we pulled up the wheelchair myself and uh, Ji, but he said okay, G18 is is fine. And we kept on talking. He kept on talking about so many things, about knowing about, telling me about his family, his three daughters. Madam Mina was not. Mina, Madam Mina was a diabetic, and we were exchanging a note on diabetic. All those things probably made the life memorable. 
and life is nothing but a handful of memories when madam kia asked me that you be also at the end of the discussion part i said ki which chapter i should open about him as a humanitarian about him as a teacher about him his command over latin and after finishing latin he used to say if you want to study biology i am a geologist shifting to indian police services being was going to be groomed to be the dsp of pomitor but i liked zoology if you want to learn something learn a little and this sentence i have you know repeated in the last 43 years to all my students coming from 12th class to that of the highest level of phd and whosoever picks up latin becomes this because the source of these science these total branches come from the meaningful words of the name names and if you find the because every name has two parts one is adjective one is the noun you look at the adjective and you know the qualities of anum capsicum anum that particular thing which gives kick but grows once a year mean anum means once a year oh you are a master you are a science you are a good science teacher in case you know the basic alphabets like that and this we picked up only from professor ms swami everyone has supported his family his colleagues his colleagues like chopra his colleagues like ahuja in human genetics his stat- uh, statistician uh, pro- uh, teacher like professor uh, colleague professor ramanujam professor dvs jain dharmveer uh, uh, baldev ji you have forgotten professor dvs jain as his right hand so far as the genetics is concerned all those people and dr ashana and he himself was a student of you know imperial botanist in india we we used to have an imperial howard abel jenner in my advisory committee dr sir yes professor uh, uh, howard howard was the head of the as a imperial botanist in india who coined the word which i still teach in my class howard used to say wheat growing in india is a gamble in temperature and professor swami nathan used to say by genetic mutation we can make this gamble as a sure shot game of us that's a beauty that's a beauty howard howard was imperial when this year i was in pusa bihar and then shifted at that time he had two students one was professor r d asana and the second was professor m s swami anyway Professor Dillo, you took me back to fifty years. Your young days, your young younger days, your teenager and not teenagers, but youthful <laughs> days, our hostel days, and <laughs> Professor Swami, <laughs> Professor Swami Nathan classes, all are so 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 nostalgic that afterwards I will go in a silence zone for half an hour to remember all that and. Bitya also, Professor Swami Nathan's daughter also. I was so shocked, couldn't eat my meal the day when we lost Meena Swami Nathan as a diabetic patient and for more complications. And because she used to be more interactive with the students, especially with PGSSU Post Graduate Students Union, and whose secretary I was, sometimes calling for dinner, sometimes calling for lunch, and sometimes calling holy. We used to go to. Was a Swami Nathan's house on holiday, and he used to base us, telling me, telling us that in in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu we don't have a holy, but we, and you, Professor B P Paul was known to be a great, great joke uh, joke teller, especially non non vegetarian joke teller. But Dr. Swami Nathan used to be in the auditorium. <laughs> Dr. Yes. Paul used to tell jokes in the auditorium. Auditorium, yes. I'm the so sorry, auditorium. but Dr. Paul, he, no he, 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 he didn't get the due. Dr. Paliwal, uh, Dr. Paul, Paul didn't get the due. Yes. He, he was uh, for his jokes. Than... For his jokes. No, no. Even otherwise, for his ah. contribution, which because Professor Swami Nathan did overpower, uh, did overshadow him when it came to the politics also. Anyway, 
uh, he, he had all the quality which had a synergistic effect. Synergistic effect made him great, greater, greatest. And as you say, Baldev, rightly, that he deserved to be uh, Bharat, uh, the, what you call um, the Ratna. last award, which you have signed also. I'm so happy that you are also in the list that, but uh, somewhere, somewhere for the transgenics, he kept quite close because of certain things. Thank you very much to you on behalf of SPSCI. You are from speaking from Australia. And the time is almost five o'clock. They are five five zero ten, five past ten minutes past five o'clock, and it was very nice to listen to you on behalf of SPSTI and NASI and this all other organization, Chandigarh administration also that you have taken so much time and thanks to Madam Rao also to be to her gracious gracious presence when I saw her. She used to be in the skirt and at his class six level in Jesus and Mary School. Was it Jesus and Mary School? No, St. Thomas School. Ah, who was in Jesus and Mary? You eldest? Mina was there. Uh, no, St. Thomas, yeah, St. Thomas. St. Thomas. So you used to three, all of them, almost looking like, you know, Teen Devi at that time, three dolls at that time. In B3, B1. B1 house number. House number B2 or B1? B12. B12. Okay. That, that is why Professor Swami Atten held the convocation most on February 12th. That's, and you remember, 12th was his favorite number because he came from Cambridge and in Cambridge it's a holiday because it's Charles Darwin's birthday, 12th February. That's right. Anyway, thank you very much to you, madam. Thanks to Professor Grover. Thanks to uh, Kia Dharambir for arranging the whole talk and Dharambir Ji, our president. Professor Patak, nice to see him always. Always. It's always a pleasure to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you thank all. Thank you, Professor Dua. Thank yes. you, Professor Grover. Go ahead. And I said thank you, everyone. So we will have the next lecture of SPSTI in the first week of November. Okay, and hopefully a Nobel lecture in medicine by Javed Agrewala. Professor Javed Agrewala, Nobel Prize in Medicine 2023. Oh, news flashed is Dr. Tirno is back to Mohali. Wonderful, wonderful. Very nice. So, Kaya, we can Thank wind you. up. Yeah, we can wind up. Uh, unless you want to listen to Professor Swaminathan's voice, the clip which uh, on which the voice did not come up. Mahipal ji, aapko mil gaya, wo kar sakoge? Ji, ma'am ji, please. Uh, ma'am, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Can I ma just, uh, can I be allowed to say a few words? Sure, sure. Just please, everybody is allowed to say in many words. So it was really nice listening to all the memories. So I I couldn't stop myself from sharing one small little memory that I have with Professor Swaminathan. Uh, uh, as sir told, he had come to Botany Department, Punjab University. Uh, so we had just joined recently as assistant professors then. So our um, uh, during the lunchtime in the garden outside, so a table was uh, quickly arranged from inside so that he could uh, sit and have his uh, lunch. So the, those tables were by chance the tables which were uh, procured for us, the new faculty. So one of that table which was lying inside was quickly brought out. And uh, I don't know how that thought came to me. So I quickly went to him with a piece of paper for an autograph. And then another brilliant thought came that I also requested him to uh, say sign on the table, the faculty table, which was a new one at that time. So uh, as soon as sir left, uh, I quickly took that table to my room and then uh, secured that signature with a transparent sheet. And then over the years, that table was in my room and now it is in my lab. And uh, and I had been very careful about that table, you know, scolding my students, yeah. don't keep, uh, keep your uh, teacup on that table or, or anything else. That it's the Ashirwa table. <laughs> so till now, till this date, that, Ashi that table is 
fondly you know um, called as ashirwa table even the new joinees in the lab so they are also scolded by the senior ones that okay this is ma'am's ashirwa table so don't put anything on it so that, this is a very, um, very nice. sweet that, memory yeah. that we have the and name of that garden is the garden of memories yes <laughs> So yeah. it is actually a memory. Dua sir, आपने garden बनाया था, so that gave me a beautiful memory. Yes. So that table is a, you know, it's a source of strength and an inspiration, uh, like a guiding light. You know, his his signatures. I and I've also pasted his signatures on a piece of paper along with a spike of wheat on it's pinned on my board. So it's uh, I think just one um, word. My name in his handwriting is a source of inspiration. It will be there forever. Wonderful, wonderful. So wonderful. thank you. Thank you. Thank you rise to be a genius like him. <laughs> yes. Okay. That Ashirwad has been working. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. With God's grace, the Ashirwad table is helping a lot. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> इसमें आवाज नहीं है मैपल जी यहाँ तो चल रही है मैम आवाज आगे नहीं जा रही प्लीज ठीक है बंद कर दीजिए कोई बात नहीं हम शेयर कर लेंगे हाँ, because my apology, आपको अपना ऑन uh, रखना पड़ेगा यू हैव टू कीप योर सेल्फ अनम्यूट वाइल प्लेइंग दिस ओके ओके अब आ रही है मैम आवाज नहीं नहीं अभी भी नहीं आ रही है सम प्रॉब्लम नहीं आ रही छोड़ दो काफी टाइम हो गया है सो वी थैंक एवरीबॉडी एंड वील बी शेयरिंग दिस क्लिप थैंक यू ऑन फेसबुक in you on youtube i will send it to you personally okay thank you they have already pasted in the chat box as well you can copy from yes. this one isi samay chat box se le lijiye just well. take it from the chat box chat box right now mai pal ji abhi band mat karna 2 4 minute ji ji mai ji So I will sign off. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.